Okay, I'll admit it. I still haven't cleaned my room, so you're just going to have to deal with this side of the room for now. Okay, I kind of don't want to wear these, so I'm just going to take them off. Hello my lovely blueberries! Welcome back to my channel. My name is Artie and I cannot believe we are only a couple weeks away from 2020 being over and beginning a brand new year. So before we get into the final flip through for my bullet journal 2020 video, I did want to talk about a few things and just self reflect with you guys for a little bit. This year was not easy for any of us. I mean, it was filled with pain, gut-wrenching sobbing, pretend smiles, and belly laughs if we were lucky. I mean, this year was painful for me, but I know with that pain also came tremendous amounts of healing. I went through a very painful breakup this year, and I got through that breakup and got through my healing completely sober. That pain taught me that I am so much stronger than I think I am. I've had some friends and family die from COVID and some are still fighting for their lives and this taught me to be selfless and to give and to be grateful for my health. This year brought pain to our nation but with that pain came transformation too. We saw a civil rights movement happen right before our eyes that forced us to look inside of ourselves and see the racism that exists in all of us. We've connected with old friends and family because of this pandemic when the loneliness arrived on a more regular basis because of technology. We are now in a second worldwide shutdown because of this pandemic. And when the first one was happening, I was complaining to a dear friend of mine, complaining about my pain, complaining about my loneliness, and how I just felt alone in all of it. And she said these words, we are in a rare occurrence right now where we are all going through the exact same thing at the same time. These words ring in my ear every single day. These words reflect the fact that you and I are not alone. You know, we are in this together. This pain is real for all of us. And hopefully this year has taught us that no more black, queer, addicted, mentally disordered, poor, sick, bullied, and immigrants have to die anymore for us to wake up. So I know that the beginning of this video was kind of heavy, but I do believe that these things need to be talked about and they are reflected in my bullet journal. I can look back to a certain time in my bullet journal and feel all the emotions that I felt when I was creating that part in my bullet journal. And so because this year was filled with so much for every single one of us, I thought it was important to kind of look back and see how this year brought change into our lives because I'm pretty sure every single one of us has had our lives turned upside down in 2020. And so this kind of reflection and documentation matters to me. So I know this video is probably going to be long because all of my videos are long. So um, while you're watching, hopefully you pick up some ideas that mesh well into your bullet journal. And if not, that's okay. Hopefully you can self-reflect with me and uh, enjoy the process. Okay, so let's go ahead and get started with the flip through. Um, I just want to say go ahead and ignore my nails. I need to redo them. They are having a bad day and they are all chipped and different sizes because I just haven't found the time to do them. So just ignore them. Okay, so as you can see here, I ran out of space in my first bullet journal uh, in the middle of 2020 and so I had to start a new journal and both of these journals are from a brand called Sekas and I have linked that brand down below if you guys are interested. So let's go ahead and begin the first flip through 
and I do want to say my style kind of did evolve a lot. You will see a huge dramatic change from this journal to my second journal. And as you can see, I have um, post-it notes everywhere because I was working a job while I was I had this bullet journal, and while I was creating uh, a in a bullet journal at this time in my life and so I would like listen to audiobooks and find things that I wanted to hold on to and write them down on post-it notes and didn't know where to put the post-it notes so you kind of are gonna see them all scattered throughout this Fujo. So as you can see it's very monochrome and minimal and here's my period tracker. This was the first time I'd done a period tracker and it just worked very well and you can see that like the second half isn't filled out because that is when I had to migrate into a new bullet journal. And this page is an example of the fact that actually you will see the next few pages have not been completed. And this is because I was going through a very painful breakup at this time and bullet journaling had become very difficult uh, for me to stay consistent in. So I wrote in pencil all the spreads that I was thinking of exploring and creating and they just never got completed. If you looked through my 2019 bullet journal, I did have all of these completed and this year I just didn't and that's okay, you know? We are not perfect in our bullet journal and we will completely skip the first half, oh my gosh, of this whole entire journal, which I didn't even realize actually until I just opened this up. So see, look at that. I'm already going back into those emotions where I, and just getting teleported back into those emotions. As you can see here, this was my relationship tracker and every single day I would write about our relationship and I would put a P for positive or an N for negative. And you know, that relationship didn't end up working out and that is okay because I found myself afterwards in that process and um, wow, this is like bringing back some feelings for me and you know, that's okay. I guess I did use some of this journal for 2019 and so this was my October theme. It was, uh, and look, look at this, relationship writing, pros and cons. I listed out my pros and cons for the relationship and I cannot believe I am being this vulnerable in front of you guys right now, but you know what? Vulnerability saves us. It is our natural habitat, so I think it's important to be honest about where we are. So this was my expense tracker. I didn't do that one either. And we are seeing a bunch of post-it notes <laughs> with a lot of my feelings written in them. So now we are in November and I did a cute little botanical theme. It's still super monochrome. You will see how much I have changed. I was so scared of using colors in my bullet journal. So I just stuck with monochrome. Besides, I like monochrome a lot. I think it's very minimal and it allows you to feel like you have a lot of room for mistakes and to explore. And that's why I really liked it. And this, for this Christmas, I did a black and white Christmas. Here is a, a list of what I want in a relationship. At this point, we had already broken up. And so I wrote a new list for everything that I wanted in my relationship. And of course I was heartbroken, so I didn't fill it out. So now we are moving on. Let's get into January. Oh, maybe I should slow down a little bit. Okay, now we are in January. So for January, I did, this is when I started exploring with washi tapes and oh my goodness, I had so much fun. I don't think I had used washi tapes before this theme actually. And I used to use all of the page, as you can see from edge to edge. I don't really do that anymore actually. 
super black and white and grays. And now we are into February and I did plants with cool little uh, plant holders uh, that were black and white grid pattern. I love botanicals. I love drawing botanicals. It just feels very, it almost feels like I am just repeating a pattern over and over and over and that kind of calms my anxiety a little bit. This was my no contact, no contact page. I was instructed by my mentor to do a 30 day no contact with my ex and I did make it all the way through. I just didn't fill it out completely so and now we are into March and I'm sorry that you cannot see this let me just take all these off and put them on this side because that is over <laughs> and super minimal theme oh yeah back to what I was saying so um, I I do this thing when I get really nervous or have a problem in my life where I write or do calligraphy with my finger in the air. So like I will start writing hey over and over and over either in the air or on my leg or do it in my head. I don't know if this is something that you guys do. Um, I looked it up actually and it was the I think it was, it's my OCD that's coming out and I'm just writing things over and over as a way, as like a self-defense mechanism to not uh, exactly face the problem and instead I am just kind of finding that control back into my life by just repeating the same pattern or writing the same word over and over again. Uh, look at this! I got 10,000 on Instagram in April. So I kind of did a very similar theme to March actually, except this time I did a black background. Super, super minimal, super monochrome. I just love this drawing. I love this whole page. It's just so calming to look at. Same with this. I think April was a very fun month for me. Oh, and look at this. Plants make me happy. This is when I got really into plants. This is also when the pandemic actually was starting and I had lost my job at this point and I was just kind of taking a break from life and life's life on life's terms. I was just not putting too much pressure on myself. I didn't go visit my family for an entire month. I just stayed in LA and just got into plants. And I loved that whole process. Like I was so afraid to buy my first plant. I was just like, I am going to kill this thing, I am going to waste money, and I'm going to feel sad when this thing dies, and so I was just really scared, and then my roommate, actually, she's the one that like encouraged me to go ahead and buy a plant, and then I just kept buying more and more and more, I just fell in love with plants, and now I truly feel like I have a deep connection with plants, oh my god, I just love this doodle. And here is the quote that I always say to you guys, if no one told you they loved you today, I love you. I just love this so much because when I was first getting sober, someone told me that they will love me until I have the courage of loving myself. And I just thought that was just such a beautiful thing. And now that I have found self-love, well, more of it, you know, I don't, always love myself fully as I'd want to, I am able to give that love away. And I think that is very important because um, we need someone to love us when we can't love ourselves. Otherwise, how are we going to have the courage to grow? And, you know, it's a scary place not knowing who you are when you are loving yourself. You get so accustomed to that comfort 
of being in your victim mentality that you just can't really see a way out. So when someone else shows me the way, because they have that power of showing me the way, you know, because they already love themselves. They know that like my toxicity at that point isn't going to break them. So when they have the courage to love me, it's a beautiful thing. And now I try to give that love away because I have it now as well. So we are done with this uh, bullet journal. As you can see, I just kind of left the rest of it blank. Um, this is just my uh, testing swatches page. So why don't we go ahead and get started in the next one. And I just love this color. It's like a nice olive -y, earthy green. And so you will see in this bullet journal, my style really evolved and adapted. I had a lot of time on my hands to really just explore what I wanted to create. And as you can see, I didn't finish this doodle and that is okay. So this is the year I get to fall in love with myself. This quote came from the pain in me when I was going through that breakup. And I am just so happy I am through it and I am back to myself and I missed that part of myself. I didn't like the part of myself that had abandoned myself and you know gave myself to this man who I made in my higher power and this relationship that I had become you know obsessed with fixing and nothing on him. He is a great guy and all the happiness and love to him and that he finds his um, path in life. This is just, this is about me and growing me and how I can become a better person. So as if you saw my 2021 setup, you will uh, recognize a lot of these spreads. And this time I added a plant watering tracker and I just loved this tracker so much. I added it in my 2021 pages. And if you saw the video, you would know. And um, I think we, yeah, so I consolidated a lot of these pages down in my 2021 setup because as you can see, they didn't, you know, they didn't get used. Obviously this one because we are in a worldwide pandemic and because, you know, maybe I just don't need a page like this, one that is a full page spread. And, you know, I used, I found, I saw other people using these pages similar to these pages. Like I was like, oh, that's a good idea. Maybe I should do it. But making too many spreads and then not using them, you know, you don't need to do that. You can make your bullet journal so simple and just really cater it to yourself. I filled this whole thing out and I'm so proud of myself for doing that. I think sometimes we avoid a page like this because we don't want to look inside of ourselves and see the good in us. It's, it's a way to avoid uh, seeing self-love and I am really proud of myself because I filled that out. So as you can see now, I am using a lot more color and a lot more uh, washi tapes and this is still very monochromatic and this was actually one of my themes that got a lot of a lot of people liked it on instagram and it just made me so happy because i love boba tea so much and now that i don't live in la i live in a small town called Hemet, where nothing ever happens nothing ever grows here except for me <laughs> and they only have one boba shop and their boba is all right so i tried to make my own bubble tea and i don't know it just wasn't as good as the shops in la so I miss my boba, but I uh, drawing these little bobas was so calming and it was so much fun. Look at that, I'm adding more color into here. It's getting a lot more neutral toned uh, in the direction of an earthy toned spectrum. So let's see, what does this say in pencil right here? My pain is attracted to their pain. Huh, okay, that is something to remember. How about we we attract our love to other people's loves. That that would be nice, no? So this is my July page and it was super beachy and coastally, but still very monochromatic. And I didn't really go to the beach that much. Oh, I did go this one time, actually a couple times, cause they had these blue waves uh, in California. I don't know if they were in other 
parts of the world, uh, bioluminescent waves, that's what they're called at night. And apparently that hasn't happened in years. And it's because of like the red algae that got formed this year and we don't know why and I have a theory that this happened because there was just so many um, there was less cars driving on the road so maybe the uh, there was just less pollution and so different plant lives were able to come out and the bioluminescent waves were just so beautiful and so that kind of inspired me to create this beachy type of theme except I didn't use any blue in it <laughs> and so here I am falling more in love with myself and getting more okay with the single life and being okay with myself and this says loving yourself means standing up for yourself it means resting when you're tired eating when you're hungry it means speaking to yourself in a positive way and not doubting yourself but trusting your feelings are completely valid and I write these things to myself when I need to hear it. So, you know, I'm not saying this because I think that I have more knowledge. I am writing these things because I need to hear them. And because I need to hear them, maybe someone else needs to hear them too. So this one says, be easy on yourself, love. Easy. I think sometimes we are just so hard on ourselves and you know the added layer of guilt and shame when we make a mistake or react in a certain way just adds more pain instead of just feeling that original feeling we just add that extra layer and just make it so much worse for ourselves and we just need to understand that you know we are human and being human means accepting our messy glorious selves and okay so this theme this house theme i did it um, because we have been at home and i just wanted to do something cozy and nice and minimal and that's how it felt and i was also moving home to my parents at this time in my life so i was moving out of los angeles and it was honestly i sat on that decision for a month and a half. I wasn't impulsive about it because I have been a very impulsive person in my life before and I didn't want to be like that anymore so I sat on that decision making sure it was the right decision for me and it was and honestly I got a lot of healing from moving back home even though being at home is difficult sometimes right because we have all of our childhood baggage to deal with so this is my vision board and papering this uh print this thermal printer company sent me one thank you to them and i created this vision board for myself i've always wanted to create a vision board but i never really did it because i thought oh i don't have time i don't have time but because we were in a pandemic i had all the time because i'd lost my job so some of the things I wrote, I printed on here is like, I want to make $100,000 annually, no student loans, a relationship, selfishly selfless, recovery, sobriety. I want a little puppy, even though I have one already. I got a new phone. My dad gifted me a new phone for my Instagram pictures, and I'm so grateful for that. So here are some more quotes. I wrote this one when I was feeling really, really down and depressed. And I wrote, sometimes I just want to be comforted, to feel warm and okay. Then I realize I can find it inside of me. And I wrote this out, I drew it out when I was feeling really down and just writing it out and creating it and putting it on paper, it does something. It just makes your pain get transported from out of you and into these pages. And this is why I love bullet journaling so much because I can make this bullet journal anything I want it to be. And it's helped me in so many ways. Like it's helped me find myself and heal myself and organize myself. And it's just a beautiful thing. Right here I wrote, I don't want or need to be fixed. My beauty exists in my brokenness. And this is so true. My power lies in my defects. My power lies in my flaws. Because if it was not for my flaws, I could not share my story. 
and help others the way others have helped me by sharing their stories with me. So when I'm going through something like for example my breakup or losing my job or going through you know anything difficult in life I always try to remember in that moment of course it's painful but I always try to remember one day I am going to be saying this story to someone else who is going through it then and they are going to thank me for it. So that's a little bit more healing. So this says, don't let your mind bully your body. Oh my gosh, that is so true for me. I am such an overthinker and I just torture myself with every single thought I can think I'm trying to fix the problem with my mind and I can't do that. <laughs> Like, the problem will get fixed on its own. I just need to take the next right step. So I tried to make an ideal routines page, but I just wasn't ready for an ideal routine, so I just didn't complete it, and that's okay. So I had a uh, morning and night on these pages, and I don't like wasting pages, so I actually went back and obviously I did this a lot later in the year than where we are because like we're at August right now, right? And Thanksgiving is in November. So I just made this doodle on this page and you can see how much color I am using. Aren't you proud of me? This is a foreshadow to the rest of the bullet journal. So we are still in August and I am using a lot more washies at this point and Oh my goodness, so I turned three years sober this year on September 10th. I have two birthdays, actually. So my first birthday is January 29th, next month is my birthday month, and September is my other birthday, where my second life began of sobriety. So I wrote, one day at a time, I am three years sober. And that was a really meaningful day to me because I never thought I would be able to get three years sober. Not even a day sober, actually. But now I am three days, or three years. Oh, hopefully not three days. <laughs> okay, so now we're in September and I did this cute little bike theme and I used a lot more colors. I usually also inspire from my previous themes and so I added some bobas in there, some botanicals, and just made this really whimsical and fun theme. I really enjoyed it. This is actually what the first ever bicycle looked like, and it's just so cute. I added a little basket on there. Look at that. I'm using more washies. I'm adding a little pothos plant because I love my pothos plants. I have a pothos plant that literally is, it grew so much that it is touching the floor from the top of my bookcase. Oh my goodness, look at the stitching. This was like a really fun page for me and I think I definitely want to use this type of border in my future spreads because it's so cute. I added some little bees and here we are. I watched The Secret and there was something that they said. There is perfection in imperfection. And I love that so much. And it kind of goes back to what I was saying earlier, how like our flaws are beautiful things and our imperfections are what perfection is. That is where our power is. And I'm just kind of reiterating what I had said earlier. And so I just made uh, October furniture mixed with Halloween, so I drew a little cat in there. This theme was so fun for me because I really started to use a lot more color. And like, now that I'm looking at this, like at the time I was just like, oh my gosh, this totally doesn't work together. All these colors just do not work at all. And I'm looking at this now and I, I'm just like, what was I thinking? They totally work together. They're all like pastels and neutrals and they're fine. Like I was just like, this is too dark. This is too pink. This is way too pink. And it's like, I'm looking now and it's just like, it looks so beautiful to me. Oh my gosh, this is a wild page. I loved this page so much. I loved the pink brick. I just love like brick accented walls. I had one in my first studio apartment in LA and I miss that apartment. It was in a bad area of Los Angeles, but like I could literally smell the urine when I walked out of that apartment, but inside my apartment, it was heaven. And this page was inspired by a lovely bullet journaler. Her account name is Bujo with Pow, and her account is just gorgeous. And I love this page spread. 
oh my goodness look at this page there's like hardly any dark colors and it was a unique page for me actually this is the point in my life where I had been home for a little while now and I was really starting to get my confidence back so here I write I accept myself exactly as I am while being fully aware that I am capable of being so much more and this just holds so true for me like, I need to be able to accept who I am right now. And if I can't accept that, how can I grow anymore? And while we should accept where we are, we need to also know we are capable of more. We are capable of learning more and growing more. And there shouldn't ever be this finish line of like, okay, now I've made it. If you ever say to yourself, okay, now I've made it, there is something wrong because I've been there. I've been there where I say like, okay, I've made it. And then like, and then I get into my pain and realize, wait, I didn't make it. And then all this self doubt arises in me. So it's a journey. It's a learning process throughout my entire life. And here I write, if we must part, may we leave more healed, whole, loved than we met. And you know, I want this to reflect any relationship I'm in, not just romantic, but friendships as well. Like, I want to be able to get into a relationship with anyone and like, you know, learn from that process and come out feeling like I can now take those lessons and apply them to my future relationships or apply them to my future circumstances that I'm going to be going through. I think people teach us so much. I feel like God speaks to us through other people and uh, it's important to recognize that and be aware of that. Oh my goodness. I think this theme was one of my favorite themes of this year. I just, you can see how much different my style has evolved. It is more doodly and instead of sophisticated. It's more, it has more color. And this is where, see, like I did start becoming more healthier in myself at this point. And this is where I wrote down my ideal routine. And this is not a routine where I am going to be doing these exact steps fitting them in this exact time frame every single day because if I did that, I would not be a healthy and happy person. There has to be time for rest. There has to be time for spontaneity. There has to be time for just accepting that your day will not get all of their tasks complete and that is okay because like as you can see I wrote oh let's do let's wake up skincare read meditate stock market research bullet journal stock market open water plants clean my plants clean my room make phone calls coffee breakfast bujo film pictures instagram post dinner with family family meeting relax social media more work stock market research skincare ready for bed step work read, get in bed and sleep, like that is way too much. And some days, you know, I do this. I do this exact routine and I feel super productive and I feel like, damn, I am killing it. But the days where I'm not, because like you can see 5 a.m., 10.30, that left, left me very little sleep and I need a lot of sleep to be able to function. I love my sleep. So it's okay if, you know, your routine doesn't get completed. That's okay. I loved this page. This is when I started exploring with different fonts in my bullet journal and I started to use this really cute newspaper washi that I received and I just loved it so much. It just adds such a vintage look and here now we are in December. A comfort zone is a beautiful place but nothing ever grows there. Oh, so true so true and we are in this month now actually and i still have a couple weeks left to finish you probably have seen my december plan with me video so there's not much to explain here this is my self-care self-love page i love this page so much and you can see like see like my style really uh changed and i think it's just a reflection of like my own growth and how I'm getting more comfortable getting out of my comfort zone and feeling like I can trust myself with exploring new ideas. Look at this. Oh my god. I just love this. This was one of my favorite, favorite weeklies of this year. I am obsessed with washi tapes right now. Like I just can't not use them. And look at this cute floral washi. Oh my god. And look, I'm using pink. Like, I do not use pink in my pages. Like, I only stick with 
grays and blacks and whites and maybe browns and greens but now I'm starting to use like this brighter color and pink like wow look at me adding more color into my life okay I haven't done this page yet it's for next week next week's weekly and as you can see there's not really everything else is empty except there is one page spread I want to show you guys and I can't show you that part because it has people's addresses in them um, but I created this spread for my Christmas card list and I think I spent I, I sent out like 40 Christmas cards this year and it was the first time I ever did something like that and the whole experience was honestly stressful and like there were so many times in that whole process where I was just like I don't want to do this I don't want to do this anymore like it's too hard I just want to give up like why did I even why did I decide that this is something that I was gonna do and I did it like I got through it I made those cards and I didn't know how to ship things I didn't have any stamps and doing this would have meant I needed to get out of my house get in my car go talk to someone a real life human at the mail center talk about social anxiety and I would have had to figure out how to mail something and I am just so proud of myself for getting through that. Like I had to remind myself like, hey, I'm not doing this for me. I'm doing this for them. And in a way that ended up being for me as well because I got to see my growth. I got to see that I can do hard things and step out of my comfort zone and do something nice for someone. Like I was just so caught up in myself, like in my breakup in my pain losing my job and moving home and just it's important to be in your grief and to feel your feelings that takes time to get over it and i'm not saying to like go think about someone else right in the middle of your grief no 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 it took me time to get to this point and i needed every second of that time for me to get to this point where i was capable of making these cards and staying up till 2 a.m. and actually honoring the commitment that I made to myself. I hope to continue to grow and blossom and see what the coming years bring for me. This was my 2021 spread list and that is it. That is all. So thank you so much for watching my flip through. I don't know how long this got to be, but hopefully not too long and you guys uh, made it through all the way to the end. So. I hope you guys got some ideas and I will see you guys in the outro. Okay, well that was the 2020 bullet journal flip through. I know this year has been tough on so many of us, so I just wanna go ahead and open my DMs on Instagram for anyone that needs an ear or just someone to talk to. Hopefully you guys picked up some ideas for your bullet journal that you thought would mesh well with you and your needs and if you didn't that's okay too hopefully you still had a good time but if you did go ahead and tag me in your recreations at Leela journals on instagram because i just love showing you guys off and if you guys think i've deserved it go ahead and give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel for well more videos like this so with that said i'm just going to go ahead and end it right here so have yourselves a very happy diwali merry christmas happy hanukkah and a very happy new year don't forget to shower yourselves with love and if you forget to love yourself i'll always love you